In 1955, Chevrolet made a move that would change the automobile world forever, though at the time they had no clue just how big it would be. They unveiled a brand new small block overhead valve V8 engine. What seemed like just another power plant soon turned into a legend, the most prolific automobile engine ever built. Over its lifespan, this motor powered everything from sleek Corvettes carving through mountain roads, to station wagons carrying families across America, to military vehicles grinding through the jungles of Vietnam. It was versatile, reliable, and everywhere. In fact, with more than 110 million units produced, chances are if you're American and over the age of 20, you've ridden in a vehicle powered by a small block Chevy at least once in your life. But how did this incredible piece of engineering come into existence? The answer takes us back to a time of global conflict, post-war innovation, and one visionary engineer named Ed Cole. During World War II, the U.S. auto industry had shifted almost entirely to the war effort, which meant consumer car innovation came to a standstill. Engineers weren't developing flashy new engines, they were focused on building tanks, planes, and other military hardware. But once the war ended, America entered a booming post-war economy. Car makers knew the public was hungry for progress, and innovation quickly returned to the auto industry. General Motors in particular wanted to position itself as the leader of this new era, and at the center of that mission was Ed Cole, a farm boy turned engineering prodigy who had studied at the General Motors Institute of Technology. Cole cut his teeth working at Cadillac's division, where he helped design the brand's next-generation V8 engines. Back then, luxury brands like Cadillac were locked in an arms race, trying to one-up each other with bigger, more powerful, and more sophisticated engines. The tried-and-true flathead engines were still common, but Cole saw that their days were numbered. Flatheads were cheap and simple, but because their valves sat inside the block instead of the head, they were restrictive. They couldn't breathe efficiently, which limited power and fuel economy. Cole pushed Cadillac to adopt a more advanced overhead valve design, which placed the valves in the cylinder head for better airflow, more power, and improved efficiency. By 1949, Cadillac launched its first production-ready OHV V8, a landmark engine that not only elevated Cadillac, but also set Cole on the fast tack inside GM. By 1952, Ed Cole was promoted to head of manufacturing at Chevrolet, and then later named chief engineer. Now he had the power to reshape Chevrolet's future. He knew the formula worked. Cadillac's OHV E8 had been a breakthrough. Why not bring the same winning concept to Chevrolet, a brand that sold far more vehicles to the average American family? But there was a catch. Chevy was already experimenting with its own overhead valve prototype, a 231 cubic inch design. When Cole reviewed it, he realized it wasn't going to cut it. His vision for Chevrolet was a lighter, more efficient, more versatile future, and this early prototype didn't fit, so he scrapped it. Instead, Cole handed his team an ultimatum that sounded nearly impossible. He gave them just about two years to design and build a brand new OHV V8 engine from scratch. It had to be lightweight, affordable to manufacture, easy to maintain, powerful, and adaptable enough to fit in everything from sports cars to pickup trucks. Imagine asking the Air Force to design a fighter jet that could dominate in dogfights, drop bombs, perform ground support, and still be cheap to build. That's how crazy Cole's demand sounded. But Cole believed in his team, and more importantly, he believed in the dream of bringing cutting-edge performance to the everyday American driver. What followed was a whirlwind of late nights, brainstorming sessions, and radical engineering. Don McPherson contributed an innovative wedge-shaped combustion chamber with inline valves that improved airflow while reducing machining complexity. Clayton Leach, an engineer from Pontiac, created a lightweight rocker arm system that became the foundation for a self-aligning valve train. It was later refined with hollow pushrods and lock nut adjusters, which made the engine not only easier to assemble, but also more durable in the long run. Meanwhile, John Dolza, a genius in manufacturing, streamlined the block casting process. He cut the number of cores in nearly half and shaved down the crankcase walls, bringing the weight of the engine down to just 531 pounds, remarkably light for a V8 at the time. After just 15 grueling months, the result of all this innovation and determination emerged, a 265 cubic inch small block V8. When it debuted in 1955, it delivered 195 horsepower at 5,000 RPM, a remarkable figure for the era. With a 3.75-inch bore and a 3-inch stroke, the engine had an ideal balance of displacement and efficiency. And thanks to Cole's foresight, it was designed to be compact and versatile, meaning it could slide easily into everything from sedans to performance cars. Chevy wasted no time in putting this engine to work. It powered the brand new 1955 Corvette, instantly transforming the sports car into a true competitor. But it didn't stop there. Lower trim versions of the small block went straight into Chevrolet's Tri-5 lineup, which included the Bel Air 150 and 210 models. Those cars became smash hits, and suddenly the small block V8 was everywhere. 
The genius of the small block wasn't just its power, it was its adaptability. For some Americans, this engine was the dependable workhorse that powered their family truck. For others, it became the heart of a performance machine they could tinker with in their garage. Soon, hot rodders and aftermarket companies jumped on board, releasing custom cams, intake manifolds, and other performance parts. Zora Arkas Duntov, often called the father of the Corvette, pushed the engine's limits even further, proving it could be tuned into a high-revving powerhouse. By 1957, Chevy had already punched out the 265 to create the 283 cubic inch small block. With fuel injection, it produced an astounding 283 horsepower, one horsepower per cubic inch, a marketing milestone that cemented Chevrolet's reputation as a leader in performance. By 1962, the 327 arrived, bringing even more power and spawning legendary racing versions like the high revving DZ302 for Trans Am competition. And in 1967, the most iconic version of all, the 350 cubic inch small block, was introduced. That engine became the backbone of Chevrolet for decades, carrying the brand through the muscle car wars of the 1960s, the fuel crisis of the 1970s, and even the emission-strangled 1980s. And yet, despite all the variations and updates, the core DNA of the small block remained the same. Compact, powerful, affordable, and incredibly versatile. It was a motor that could truly be everything to everyone, a piece of engineering that transcended generations. By the late 1960s, the Chevrolet small block had become more than just an engine, it was a cultural icon. When the 350 cubic inch version launched in 1967, it quickly became the most beloved of them all. Why? Because it struck the perfect balance. Plenty of torque for trucks, enough power for muscle cars, and unmatched reliability for everyday drivers. The 350 wasn't just an engine, it was a workhorse that refused to die. Through the glory days of muscle cars, the gas crisis of the 1970s, and even the emission-strangled 1980s, the 350 just kept soldiering on. So think about that for a second. Automakers around the world were scrambling to adapt to new regulations, rising fuel prices, and changing customer demands. Yet the small block Chevy, especially the 350, just kept finding new ways to fit in. Chevy refined it with updates like electronic fuel injection in later years, but at its core, it was still the same dependable pushrod V8 that had been born in the 1950s. By the early 1990s, after nearly 30 years of continuous production, the original small block was still powering everything from Camaros and Corvettes to pickup trucks and even boats. But in 1992, Chevy decided the time had come to move things forward. Enter the LT1. This wasn't a total departure, it was technically still part of the small block family, but it brought modern updates like reverse flow cooling, which cooled the cylinder heads before the block to reduce knocking and allow for higher compression ratios. The LT1 powered cars like the Corvette, Camaro, and even full size sedans, giving the small block a new lease of life for the 1990s. It was a sign that while the small block DNA was timeless, Chevy wasn't afraid to evolve. That evolution hit full stride in 1997 with the debut of the LS1 in the fifth generation Corvette. This was a true clean sheet redesign, yet it carried the unmistakable small block spirit. The LS1 featured an all aluminum block, coil and plug ignition, and a rigid deep skirt design. It was lighter, stronger, and far more efficient than anything before it, but most importantly, it stuck to the simple pushrod architecture that had made the small block so versatile. And it fit it did. The LS series exploded in popularity, not just with factory GM cars, but also in the aftermarket. Hot rodders, racers, and tuners quickly realized the LS was a gift. It could be swapped into practically anything, from Miatas to Mustangs to old-school muscle cars. Junkyards became treasure troves for LS motors, and aftermarket companies built entire businesses around them. Whether naturally aspirated, turbocharged, or supercharged, the LS could handle it. Affordable, lightweight, and capable of making huge power with minimal mods, it became the engine swap king. 